guys, this is going to be a long video, so there are timestamps in the description box if you'd like to skip around and pass certain parts. Hi and welcome to my channel, Modern Modiste. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this furry coat. Um, if you decide to make this, it doesn't have to be furry. You know, you can use whatever fabric you want. Just add interfacing if you want this to be more stiff and you decide to use a lightweight since spring is coming and we're probably reaching for more lightweight fabrics but yeah uh, I'm gonna show you how I made it and I do plan on making two more one that's a lightweight spring fabric and one that is teddy material so I'm finally gonna make my long teddy coat but uh yeah here's what I used I traced out this blazer to make my pattern Normally when I make my pattern, I just get a hoodie that fits me big, that fits big on me, that's a little loose. And uh, I trace that and I alter it into the shape that I want my garment to be. So if I want a jacket or a blazer, usually that comes from me tracing the hoodie. I'm just tracing this today because uh, this is what I pulled out first. But it's a linen blazer, it's pretty stiff. And if you are just starting out tracing your own clothes for patterns, I would recommend using linen linen fabric or a linen garment to trace because uh, it's pretty stiff and I think that it's easier to trace things that are pretty stiff and aren't stretchy because sometimes when you trace over a uh, hoodie material it's stretchy so you might mistrace and not you know regard the stretchiness of it whereas linen or a stiff fabric you won't have to worry about that you can just trace as is and uh, it'll be easier to trace these shoulder lines. Uh, go follow me on Instagram. I don't post much over there, but I will start posting more. I'm trying to get myself to start posting more, but between YouTube videos and my job, it's just a lot. <laughs> but uh, And I'm not like the type of person who posts on social media normally, but I'm trying to post, and for the most part, I post my, my YouTube videos that are coming, the projects before I post them on YouTube. So I'll post like this jacket on Instagram before I post it to YouTube. So go follow me there and go and subscribe to my email list on my blog at modernmodiste.com because there I post a written tutorial with pictures in this video uh, of the project. I try to do every project, but you know, sometimes, like I said, with time, I don't always have time to put up the post immediately with the video but it comes and it's gonna come if it's not there yet so subscribe to my email list on my blog so that you can be emailed when the written tutorial is available and in that written tutorial blog posts I include tools and materials I use and a few other details maybe sometimes but yeah go and uh, subscribe to my email list please and thanks so if I wanted to make a blazer like this one, I'd lay it out like this and trace around the entire front using the sewing pin method where you poke holes through the paper with the sewing pin to trace out the shape. But I just want a basic shape to work with, so I just folded this in half and traced around it. I went over the lines in a sharpie to help you see it. Next, I cut out the pattern adding seam allowance to every side except the fold side. I trace this basic shape onto the paper and I'm going to add to the bottom the length I want my coat to be plus two inches hem allowance. To add the dart, I'm going to measure about four to five inches from the shoulder down the armhole. Then I marked 9 inches down from the bottom of the armhole down the side. I marked a line from that top mark at the armhole down to the bottom. Then I measured 2 inches from that line and 9 inches up and down 1 inch from that line and connected those marks which created a diamond shape. Next, I drew a line from the top of that diamond shape to the armhole mark, about one inch above the initial mark. Then I curved in the side at the mark like this for the waist. 
Since this will be the front of my jacket, I mark the front of the blazer's neckline onto my paper and extend that about 3 inches for the front lapel. I'm using this picture on my phone as reference. Next, I extended the inner edge of the bottom half about one and a half inches and drew a diagonal line connecting the two lines. I decided to extend my lap another inch. Last, I marked the line from the point of the bottom of the diamond shape to the bottom of the pattern. I cut out these two pieces like this, adding seam allowance to the edges and marked a reminder on the inner edges I cut to add seam allowance. For the back, I'm going to trace that basic pattern, extend the length, and mark the same 4 to 5 inches from down the armhole from the shoulder. I drew a line from the mark across the back, marked 9 inches, then drew a line about 5 inches from the inner line down to the bottom. I marked 2 inches from that line, and then 1 inch from that line. Next, I drew a line connecting a 9 inch mark at the side to the lines I just marked. I extended my center line to be 9 inches up and down from the line across, then connected the points. Next I drew a line from the top point of the diamond to the first line drawn and from the bottom point of the diamond to the bottom of the pattern. I used the front side to mark the same waist curve on the back. and added this extra inch to the side, which was completely unnecessary. I just, you know, was going for one thing and changed my mind halfway through. Then I marked where the pattern would need to be cut on the fold and where I'd need to add seam allowance when transferring to the fabric and I cut out my pattern. Last, I traced around the sleeve, then use the sewing pin method to mark with little holes I pushed through the paper to get the curve of the sleeve. This is a method I show in my how to make patterns tracing your own clothes video. I connect those little dots I made, then trace everything in marker and repeat with the other side and also add 2 inch hem allowance. Now with my fabric folded in half, I line up my pattern where it says fold on the fold of the fabric and pin it to the fabric. I cut it out making sure to add seam allowance along the edges I wrote to add seam allowance on the pattern. Another way to transfer my pattern is to trace it onto my fabric with chalk. Due to the furry nature of my fabric, I couldn't really see the chalk lines though for this project, so I just pinned it to the fabric and cut it out. To assemble, I started by attaching the two front pieces together by pinning them right sides together. I sewed them together with a straight stitch, then top stitched the seam down on the right side of the fabric. For the back, I attached the back sides, right sides together. Then top stitched.
And then I sewed the top yoke to the bottom right side spacing, then top stitched the same way. Attach the fronts and back at the shoulders right side spacing and sew. Open up the jacket like this and pin the center point of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. Right side spacing, then pin the rest of the sleeve to the shoulder like this. Sew it on and repeat with the other sleeve. Line up the sides and pin at the armpits. Sew from the armpit down the side and then from the armpit down the sleeves. I used a lazy method for the lining and traced the basic pattern onto the fabric. Use the pieces I cut from the front to add the length, only I cut my lining to be two inches shorter than my outer coat and the waist curve. I laid the two back pattern pieces on the fabric to make that dart, that diamond dart again, and I traced the, the diamond dart onto the back of my fabric. Then folded the fabric at the middle point of those diamond darts and uh, sewed along the line. This is how I traced out the front lining pieces. I cut the short side out two inches shorter than the pattern. Then I cut the other part in two pieces, one in the lining and the other, which is part of the front lapel in the outer fabric. I attached the right side spacing like this, then top stitched each seam down on the front side of the fabric. Assembled the lining the same way I did the outer jacket. The sleeves are also two inches shorter than the outer fabric. I measured my collar minus the lapel and cut a collar on the fold. The bottom of the folded collar is my neckline measurement and the top longer edge is about an inch added to each side, so two inches longer length. With the collar folded in half, I cut the line to be a slanted like this. Next I sewed the sides right sides facing, snipped off the excess fabric at the corners and turned my collar inside out and top stitched.
I lined up the middle point of the collar with the middle point of the neckline and pinned and sewed the collar onto the coat. For the pockets, I cut out two clearly uneven pockets. I was rushing through the project at this point. That's why my pockets look so lopsided. Anyway, I cut the pocket lining about two inches shorter than the outer fabric pocket. I sewed the lining to the outer fabric right side spacing and snipped the seam like this to reduce bulk in the seam. I turned it right side out, top stitched the edge, and hemmed the top edge with a double fold. Next, I pinned the pocket to the coat and sewed it on. I made some belt loops for my coat by sewing in the short and long sides of this little rectangle, then folding in half again and sewing. Then I sew those loops to the size of my coat. To attach the lining to the coat, I laid them right sides together and sew the two together along the top neckline and the bottom edge. Attached the lining and outer coat sleeves by sewing the perimeter of each sleeve opening together with both sleeves inside out. Then top stitched around the sleeve. The outer fabric should be folded under about one inch. Next I sew the sides closed but left an opening on one side to pull the coat right side out. I cut off the excess fabric since I decided to curve my lapels, then pulled my coat right side out. Next I top stitched making sure to sew the opening I left closed across the neckline and down the other side. To make the belt, I cut two long strips of fabric, sew them together right sides facing, leaving a short side undone. I pulled the belt right side out through the short side left undone, then top stitched around the entire perimeter, making sure to close that side that was left undone. So I'm considering adding these snap button closures so I can close the coat without the belt, but I decided not to do it yet. Yeah, stay tuned for my next video. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.